Well, my collection of random old stuff has drastically grown recently due to someone moving out of the area giving me all his old stuff. And among what was in there was this rather interesting little device, which is a Tandy electric typewriter slash word processor. Don't know a whole lot about this thing yet. I was born too late to have really had any experience with these things back when they were in you know, in common use, but my guess would be this is probably from sometime in the 80s, maybe early 90s. It has, so up here is the actual um, part where the paper goes in. It's gonna be set up, so you can get to zoom in there a little bit. So yeah, up here, it's, it's pretty similar to a normal typewriter. It seems to be one sheet at a time rather than a continuous roll. This is completely filthy up here. It needs to be cleaned out before I do anything with it. And then opens up. Right here, keyboard is actually pretty nice. I would not mind having this keyboard just by itself for my regular use. It feels pretty good. Very odd arrow keys. The 80s seem to have been full of odd arrow keys on computers and computer-like devices. Pretty standard layout overall. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it on now. I feel like you like make a beat out of that startup, uh, out of that startup noise there. Okay, getting the camera to focus on this screen is very difficult, but it should all be visible here now. So what's most interesting about this device actually is the floppy disks that it uses to store files. But for now, here's our little menu. Just on here, we can create text. We can store it as a file on the disk. We can print text, which I'm not sure if that means it's like printing the entirety of what you've typed out, or if you're using it like an actual typewriter, um, just, you know, printing out as you type. And then there's clear text. Since the actual printer part of this is, you know, far too dirty to use right now, I haven't been able to test that out yet. And then there's the disk menu where you can, you know, load files, rename them, delete them. You can also initialize the disk, which I'm assuming means format it. In fact, I'm sure it means formatting. So now that this is actually in focus again, you can see it's, you know, warning you this will erase all data on the disk. Do you wish to proceed? And also it's on the top side of the disk. The disks are double-sided and this drive only does them one at a time. Of course, we hit yes right now, it tells us there is no disk in the drive. And even if there were one, it probably wouldn't work. That's one of the things that definitely does not work right now on this thing. Back to the menu. So for now, let's just create text. Now here's something kind of annoying. If you hit on the caps lock key, it stays locked no matter how many times you press it. And so to turn caps lock off, you have to press shift. That's kind of a dumb setup. I don't know if anything else at the time did this, but it just seems like a bad idea overall. I'm not sure who thought it was a good one. Oh yes, a, a typewriter. Also inconvenient for me is that the, is the uh, menu and backspace keys being placed right next to each other. That and the fact that the backspace key is tiny. Never been a fan of that layout. Oh yeah, and then it beeps when you get close to the end of your space there. It's something that I'm used to seeing on, you know, other word processing programs for like the Commodore 64, for example. And also, of course, real typewriters will dean quite often when you get close to the end. And now here's something that I was mildly impressed by. It actually takes the entire word down to the next line. So the only other word processing experience that I have on old stuff like this is on the Commodore 64, and literally none of the programs for that thing that I've tried so far will do this. They will either just keep going off the edge of the screen if you keep typing, or they will, you know, just kind of split the word in half and carry on on the next line. So this is nice. It's a purpose-made word processor, so I guess it makes sense for it to have stuff that cheap Commodore software wouldn't.
So overall, um, aside from some odd layout choices, this feels pretty nice to type on. The arrow keys are a little bit oddly shaped. But they're perfectly usable. There's four of them, not two, like the Commodore, and unfortunately not five, like the Vector. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the really interesting thing about this machine here is the fact that it has its own special floppy disk type. You can already see they're, you know, noticeably different in design. They're much smaller than your standard three and a half inch ones, or five and a quarter inch ones. Here's a three and a half for comparison. Quite a bit smaller, and it's got that open slot down the middle instead of a little slider. And now these go in the side, right down here. Nothing too special to look at. It looks like a regular three and a half inch floppy disk drive, just a little smaller. Go back to the menu and then I'll clear the existing text real quick just because text and text memory is cleared. All right. And now here's the part of the machine that definitely does not work right now, unfortunately. It can't actually load anything off of a disk right now. If I try to... So it goes to this menu, it's supposed to be loading here, makes an awful noise, and that's it. It won't respond to any inputs now, and I waited for quite a while, waiting for it to actually do something. Floppy disks are slow, but not... Not this slow. This thing is definitely getting stuck, especially because if I take the disc out, you can hear it still going. It is not happy right now. Only way to really stop it is to turn the whole thing off and on. So yeah, this is an interesting machine, at least to me. Don't know a whole lot about it yet. It's got a model number there, need to look that up at some point. We know it turns on, printer may or may not work, floppy disk drive may be dead, and I doubt it's replaceable, and so that's really gonna be the biggest issue with this, especially since it'd be really cool to get these nifty little things working. I do have a couple blank ones lying around, in addition to the ones that have been previously written to. This one says Monk on the back. The one I think said Halfling. What if the guy I got them from was like writing out stuff for a Dungeons and Dragons campaign on this? That'd be kind of cool. Either way, once I know more about what this is, and once I've gotten more of it to work, or at least tried to get it to work, I will probably make a follow-up video. And for now, that is all.